I decided to go to law school um, originally based on my uh, experience wa- working for four years after undergrad. Um, I got a job working with um, a doctor who part of his work was doing expert witness um, testimony and and really research into cases uh, involving uh, like plaintiff side toxic tort litigation. So um, I was interested in that work because of um, an interest in public health and really came to see how the law was an agent of change for things like asbestos and other like products that were harmful and working conditions that were harmful um, for consumers and workers. Um, And I really enjoyed that work. um, And I really enjoyed that my my boss really saw it as um, a cause and a a political issue um, of corporate power and the ills of capitalism. Um, And so that got me initially interested in the law. And then in January, 2017, I was at a protest in DC against Trump's inauguration. And I was arrested along with 200 other people during those protests. And this was the J20 case. So for about 18 months, the whole group of folks, almost 200 people ended up with charges, um, were charged with conspiracy to riot and then a whole host of other felony charges under that conspiracy theory. Um, So that was a really transformative and impactful experience for me. Um, I'd been engaged in some criminal legal um, reform issues, been to Black Lives Matter protests and stuff, but, you know, as a middle class white woman, this was the first time I'd ever really had to confront the possibility of a criminal conviction or um, despite my lawyer's assurances, the possibility of, of jail time. Um, and that just really, you know, I felt so disempowered through that process. Um, even though I had this background in doing legal work and this familiarity with the court systems and had worked on civil trials, it was just such an alienating and disempowering experience. It really woke me up to the ills of the criminal legal system and got me involved and interested in prison abolition work. And so that's ultimately what I wanted to go to law school to do was um, something involved with criminal legal reform um, and prison abolition, although I went to law school pretty, pretty new in terms of engaging in the legal aspects of those issues. Um, And then now that I've graduated from law school, um, I really want to build on some of the movement lawyering work and the experiences that I've been able to have during law school. Um, Many of those, um, thanks to National Lawyers Guild as a model and support for that work. Um, So my hope is to really work with community organizers. I've had a taste of that, um, like I said, during law school, working with um, the People Not Prisons advocacy group, um, which right now is really fighting um, to pass a moratorium bill that would halt all prison and jail construction or expansion for the next five years. Um, so I've been really involved in that campaign and, and others that they've worked on. Um, and yeah, I want to find opportunities now to stay engaged with movement organizers and really find ways to apply my legal skills and training to benefit those movements. Um, After law school, my job, I have a one-year fellowship with Harvard's new Institute to End Mass Incarceration. So this is a clinical program and independent organization um, working basically to develop movement lawyering models and provide support to community organizers working to end mass incarceration. Um, It's a really new organization, only about a year old. So (laughs) I'm really excited to be part of it in this sort of developmental phase. Um, To give a little bit more description of their work, um, the goal is to work with community organizers to build collective action power in the communities most directly affected by mass incarceration. Uh, And like I said, part of that work is developing new models of movement lawyering with a particular focus on trying to find ways to turn public defenders into agents of systemic change and how public defenders could be really activated in a movement lawyering framework. Um, I'm excited for that work, like I said before. (laughs) And I'll be living in Chicago and working remotely. Yeah. Um, uh, So NLG has had a major influence in what you could call my legal career so far. Um, 
I knew about National Lawyers Guild before I went to law school and immediately knew that that was one of the student organizations that I wanted to be involved in. Um, I was familiar with National Lawyers Guild because they were involved in supporting the J-20 defendants. Um, I'd also met some National Lawyers Guild attorneys doing movement support work. For example, I um, volunteered on a jail support hotline in St. Louis during the Stockley verdict protests. And I think that was in 2017. Um, and I met uh, King Downing, who is a, a former, I think, mass defense director at the national level. And Chris Hermes worked on the J-20 cases, who's another um, former chair of mass defense at the national level. And so, yeah, I just thought they were doing really cool work and was eager to see how to um, engage with movements as a lawyer in some of the ways that I'd already seen uh, these folks doing. Um, then during law school, uh, I just think that working with National Lawyers Guild lawyers has, you know, provided me with a lot of experience um, and answers to questions about things like what is the role of an attorney in a movement, um, how can lawyers apply special skills or training um, that can benefit movements, basically what's the value add of having a law degree. Um, one thing I've really appreciated is uh, getting mentorship from Josh Raisler Cohn, who does mass defense for NLG Massachusetts, as I'm sure folks know. Um, I initially got connected with working with the Massachusetts chapter um, during the 2020 uprisings, because um, based on my experience with Stockley jail support hotline, I reached out to see if there was any support needed for the um, NLG Massachusetts jail support hotline. And uh, from there, uh, I was drawn into that work as I, I did volunteer myself and um, our chapter uh, along with other student members really has taken on managing the hotline. But through that work, I got to work with Josh and we um, have worked with him also in a few other um, cases of working with local community organizers, like with the response uh, to evictions of unhoused people at Mass and Cass. Um, and he's kind of backed me up when I have questions um, with work with people, not prisons. Uh, and just, you know, he's really helped to show me, yeah, the role of lawyers in working with these movements. And I think uh, one of his lines that has stuck with me is, you know, the job of a lawyer is to answer you know, what happens if, um, and how that can be, you know, really beneficial information for organizers and helping them think through and make decisions uh, based on legal knowledge and strategy. Um, and yeah, so through National Lawyers Guild Massachusetts, I've been able to dive into legal observing, um, working on the support hotline, like I mentioned, um, you know, some of that advising for, for protests, what happens if, and, and know your rights issues, um, and finding a place for the law in terms of um, helping groups with drafting policy or pre preparing legislative testimony, putting together fact sheets, answering questions, and those sorts of things. And after law school, I, as I mentioned, I'm living in Chicago now. I'm really uh, excited to plug in with the Chicago chapter, um, both to continue this work. And I think that National Lawyers Guild is a really um, great link to local community organizers. And I, of course, want to stay involved in movement organizing work now that I'm in Illinois. Um, OK. <laughs> What makes me happy? <laughs> uh, I love the outdoors. Um, so my favorite things would be jogging with my dogs, Conrad and Lilo. They're great uh, and really good at running together, thankfully, or it could be a tangled up mess. <laughs> um, I also really love hiking, camping and rock climbing, just being outdoors in general. Um, I'm also a tarot reader, although definitely still on my learning journey. Um, but I found that's a really helpful tool for self-reflection and helping others reflect on current issues in their lives. Uh, also, one of my favorite things is hearing from former clients. I love when they keep in touch and keep me updated on their lives. Uh, really appreciate being able to carry some of those relationships forward with those folks. <laughs> 